So Todd, you're the manager of IFS coatings, uh, uh, low cure, low temperature uh, substrate uh, uh, powder coating. Tell us a little bit about that and, and all uh, that you all have available uh, for uh, end users. Okay, great. Uh, well, first off, uh, Tim, thanks for having me on. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to have the conversation. Um, regarding uh, the, the product line uh, is, is referred to as PureClad. That's the, the product name we've given to the heat sensitive substrate product mix. Uh, we've got a fairly wide breadth of products since I've now come on board and we've, we've kind of expanded that to, to various markets. So we've got, uh, you know, polyesters for vertical applications with, with some exterior durability. You know, we've got epoxies that'll fit into the office and store fixture market when we're getting into a writable work surface and we need more chemical resistance. And then we've got hybrids that even kind of fit in the mix there in the middle, kind of a little bit of the best of both worlds. So we've kind of got a, a more diverse product line than when even came on board and it's continuing to expand based on different markets we get into. We kind of end up finding a kind of a fit for use, a product that we need for a certain market. And then we tend to develop that product and find other places for that product uh, to fit uh, in the industry. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like, you know, this has been talked about for many, many years, getting a really good low cure. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like it's accelerated in the past a uh, couple years, you know, uh, where you've got yep. you all are working with a lot of uh, uh, equipment manufacturers and such. Talk a little bit about uh, the industries which are are using or, or could be using uh, the low cure. Uh, yeah, coating. well, and, and my history, I came from the liquid world. I was in liquid <laughs> coatings for so conversion varnishes, UVs, uh, polyurethanes, uh, anything mainly liquid application, mainly on wood, not so much on metal. So when IFS reached out to me, I had had a little history of, you know, watching the, the powder on wood kind of rear its head maybe 10, 15 years ago. And obviously there were some successes and there's even some sustainability in certain markets with that. But that application was um, more the flocking application where they're going to heat up that board uh, extremely hot. They're going to throw the powder on and then they're going to even cure it even longer, you know, at 20, 30 minutes at 300 plus degrees. So the degradation of the substrate, it limited the, the, mm -hmm. the, the substrates we could code, it limited the markets we could get into. So when IFS reached out to me and I was, again, I was in the liquid world and this intrigued me in the fact that the changes that, that, that had been made with uh, just technology and resin as a whole, uh, the mm -hmm. application and cure had changed a, a bunch from the typical, the convection cure in the past is moving more towards uh, gas IR, which now affords us more options with uh, with substrates, and 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 then it kind of opens up Pandora's box for for various markets we can get into. Um, so it used to be mainly only single piece product. It, uh, from a wood standpoint, it was mainly one big piece of wood, typically a certain type of substrate, certain moisture content, a lot of a lot of strict or stringent variations that you had to stick to. Where now with with the, uh, the the variations in cure, and we may still include convection in cure, but we do more gas IR, uh, which now we can do glued up product. We're doing products that are having you know joints. It's a five piece door. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a tongue and groove. It's um, you know we've we've got the the, the ability with gas IR curing at 265 for you know the five and a half to six minutes versus 30 minutes at 300 plus. Now we open up even hardwoods and some other things. So again, the, 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 it's been a combination of uh, of a company looking uh, forward with technology and resin, and then our equipment partner uh, at Wolf Ray with with the gas IR. The combination of the two, again, has kind of opened up Pandora's box for the for the various substrates and markets we can we can approach and have right. uh, you'll have a different conversation with than even you know ten years ago. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, Mike Chapman leading the Wolf Ray. I know it's a, yes. a, a sister company with you all, which is really integral. You've got the. This is what I think wasn't happening before right you, you had the powder you didn't have the equipment the the ir ovens that were really working yep. and syncing together and it seems yep. like it's really really working very very well it is and yeah and that's the thing i i, I don't think we're, we're far off even 10 years ago I, the technology has changed the application cure has changed but again the partnership of of a powder company and an equipment company um to to really grow this industry and, and be able to to demonstrate to a to an oem or an end user um the true application in a true production environment, and at Wolf Ray, we can do that. So um, we've definitely opened up some eyes. Uh, we, we're looking at markets we've probably never tried to even approach before. Uh, we're getting more traction day to day. You know, a, a lot of the initial conversations I have with customers that the, they might be a little apprehensive because they may have been in this market before and they kind of played with the powder on wood and uh, maybe it didn't go as well as they expected. So they don't want to stick their neck out, so they might be a little bit apprehensive in the beginning. But as we've had more conversations, as we've got product on their on their parts, as we've got uh, we've shown them the, the the production environment we can bring them into at a, at a, at a at Wolf Ray with the gas IR, um, we're we're changing minds right now. Uh, I think this is a you know I've been on board for 18 months now. We've made a lot of good changes in, in a short time, but but we've also um, 
I think 2024, you're going to see a lot of traction uh, with this industry. Um, but we made a big push at IWF, you know, 18 months ago or, you know, about a year ago, I guess, in August. Uh, and we'll be back there again uh, next year. And I think it'll be a whole different tune to uh, the acceptance of powder on wood at that right. time. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I just talked to a powder coder about two weeks ago using the IFS uh, coating products uh, who just ordered a Wolf Rayette system. And when I was talking to him about it, he said, I wouldn't have believed it until I saw it. And exactly. he went down to Texas, he saw it, and he was yep. convinced right away and placed the order. Uh, yep. Is that is that part of it is educating a lot of the end users on what they can do? Because a lot of them I know want to open up their markets. They want to do yep. more. Uh, this was a, a New England company, which there's a lot of wood MDF up there. Yep. Is that pretty yep. much what you're trying to do is educate them and showing them, right? Not telling yep. them, but showing them this can exactly. work very well. Yeah, and, 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 you know, and, and that particular application you're talking about, that's a that's a, a metal powder coater that's you know more of a job right. shop that's doing metal, but has is, is looking to uh, for ways to expand his business and, and grow in markets that he's never been in before. And, and this wood or heat-sensitive substrates market, um, especially in the East Coast, is so massive and the density of opportunity out there is, is huge. So we're actually working closely with them to to help them grow that market you know they're coming from a metal job shop um application to now they've got to go call on a customer that's doing you know display work or point of purchase or whatever it may be so we're helping them i am trying to help them as much as i can with um you know what conversations to have with people you know the questions they're going to ask you what we need to be prepared for um the expectation that they're going to have for the coding itself not only you know functional or um or performance but also aesthetics and what it looks like and how it feels and, and the touch and feel of the product so there is an acceptance in the market that we need to meet. And I think the powder, again, we've made a lot of inroads in the last you know, 18 months with, with progress on product and smoothness, uh, the mm -hmm. touch and feel of it. You know, we can do the antimicrobial. Um, we can do the fine textures. I mean, we've always been able to do texture, but now we're doing very fine texture. We're getting lower in gloss and we're getting smoother every day. Um, mm -hmm. So, so again, I, it, it's opening up markets with, with that, that were probably not there 15 years ago. Um, and now we're opening up eyes from a standpoint of even a, you know, a metal job shop that is seeing the vision of, of powder coating wood and, and growing his business in a, in a totally different fashion than he probably thought of 10 years ago. Right. Yeah, you right. mentioned that. And I think in particular, like I said, the POP industry, you know, where you've got some uh, uh, products that are wood and metal, right? And now mm -hmm. they can handle everything at once yep. Uh, yep. and really... Get that, get that business that they didn't weren't going to have exactly. before. Didn't even think they could get. Exactly. Yeah, I tell you, Tim, we put uh, we 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 kind of went out on a limb and put a lot of the wood products in the uh, the Fabtech booth this year um, mm -hmm. at, at IFS. And I tell you what, the the again, the IFS has been a you know the, the very large manufacturer in the metal industry forever. So obviously, when you go to a show like that, you're seeing a lot of the same customers over and over again. And you're always looking for something new to bring to them. And what we found out by putting that wood in that in that in that show and, and, and showing the product, we had a lot of those POP and display people coming in, people that are already powder coating, so they already understand powder, they see the value of powder, the efficiency, the sustainability of powder, so they love it. But they're liquid coating their wood, or they're outsourcing, or they're thermofoiling, or they're doing a you know a laminated product. I mean, they're just doing all these different labor intensive processes and not very sustainable processes. That now that they see that we can do this on wood and, and, and it's just making their minds turn. So we've already had, I think, three customers from that Fabtech show come down and, and test mm -hmm. and trial um, based on just what they saw at that show. Right. So right. And again, now we're talking to a guy that's already powder coating and it's a much easier end because they already understand the values and the benefits of powder. So uh, right. it was good putting it at that show. That's I think the, I don't think it's ever been done before to really put that wood product in front of those customers. So it was it was right. nice to see the uh, the feedback. Right. Yeah. And like you said, POP, you've got, uh, it opens up to cabinetry, right? Uh, yeah. A lot like of woodworking, those type of things. Uh, yeah, you mentioned I mean, the doors. Furniture, store fixture, display, point of purchase. I mean, a lot of that stuff, I don't, I wouldn't say it wasn't too far off even 10 years ago for a lot of those guys, because a lot of that single piece product, a lot of it's already textured. They don't mind that market. Um, but what we've done is, is allowed them to now we're getting smoother and smoother. We're getting more fine textures. We're getting products that are more chemically resistant, but also still smooth. Um, so not only are we open up more product that they're offering, because now we can do more than just textures, um, then we get into the kitchen cabinet market. Now we get into five-piece doors. That was impossible 15 years ago. Now we're doing potentially five-piece doors. If, if it's a, you know, a stock product, something going to the, you know, the mass merchants, things like that, our finish is, is far superior durability-wise and, and chemical resistance, performance characteristics to a liquid. But it's always been that aesthetic and that feel. And now we're getting close enough that I feel like we're able to get into that market. Uh, when you get into semi-custom or custom cabinets, you know, the higher end stuff where it's going to be that it's going to be purple, red, blue, whatever different color every day. 
probably not a great fit for powder as a whole, but what we can do in those semi-custom markets is do a primer. So we can do a primer on that cabinet, still take one or two coats out of their process, you know, get rid of some of the VOCs, you know, become more sustainable and still maybe allow them to put a liquid top coat on just from the aesthetic standpoint for the variation in colors or, or glosses. So mm. I think we've got good answers for all the different variations of markets in kitchen cabinets, uh, whether it be a primer or a top coat. Gotcha. Yeah. Like I said, as you see more manufacturers and the OEMs not want to ship their parts around to a lot of different people, right? They want mm. people that can handle, yep. you know, the metal, the wood, whatever type of different substrate so they can exactly. keep it kind of, keep it off the road, kind of get it there and get it back quickly with that. And, and again, yep. like I said, you all uh, work very closely with Wolf Royette. If somebody has a question uh, that when they talk to you, uh, like I said, they're more than welcome from what I understand to go down to Texas and see at your headquarters there and, and see exactly, see it being done and see how, I don't want to say easy, but to see yeah. how it's done and, and how they can integrate it into their system pretty, pretty efficiently. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, um, we're getting rid of the connotations of, of it being only a textured product. Uh, we can't do this. It's got to be a certain kind of board. We're able to get our products, our customers to ship their products down to, to the lab and we're able to test. Typically, we will do it in advance a little bit just to make sure we understand the product and make sure we understand what powder they're going to want on there and, and, and the finished product. Um, and then we're going to get them down there to actually see the manufacturing process. We're going to load the parts, we're going to spray it in front of them, and we're going to cure it. Uh, typically, we'll have them send down a few parts of you know their finished product of their current processes, just so we understand uh, the expectations of their uh, of the coating that they're looking for. So when they come down, we're, we're setting ourselves up for success if possible in most cases. Uh, and then if nothing else, we leave with uh, opportunity, and we leave with you know maybe a challenge here or there, or uh, you know things that we need to work on, or possibly that maybe they need to work on on their end. So. Um, if you look at like bathroom vanity markets, you know, when you got, you know, the low hanging fruit would be like the thermal flow or the, or the, uh, laminating processes, uh, you know, it's been around forever. It's a fairly economical way to, to, to build a door and to finish a door, but the limitations on stock and colors, and you've got the, the points of contention with, you know, you've got seams and glued up product that tends to fail over time. And if we can educate the customer to go into a, you know, a seamless, you know, product of, of a powder coating with more durability, you know, no edge banding. No, no seams, no glue, um, and, and, and really we can, we can match those fine textures and smoothness now with powder.